for everybody watching we literally just started recording and the computer just fucked up so let's do this again um but no uh we literally just went over the fact that mangoose like That's a gentleman me. right <laughs> No, um, the fact that I, I was low-key surprised. Low-key surprised to actually see Mangoose actively playing, actively creating fall content. And I, I was actually just wondering as to the, the, the why. Like, what made Mangoose himself? Which I'll be, I'll be real with you, bro. Like, I know you don't give yourself enough credit. And I know that you're like, oh, I'm, I'm probably bigger than I should be sort of deal. Right? Like, you're very mm -hmm. humble about that. But... Your opinion, low key, still fucking carries a lot of weight. Your ass could have literally not played Fall for six months. As soon as you make an opinion on Fall, people are gonna care, right? So, what exactly made you want to play Fall again? Uh, well, I tried it out with the when when the new patch came out. I was like, all right, let me give. I, I've been trying it out. Like every time I see like a big patch come out for Fall, I'm like. All right, let me give this shit a try, and I would I would play it, and I'd be like, ah, oh, it's still fucked. I'm out, and I would just be done with it. But with the latest patch, okay. instead of dicking around with new heroes and dicking around with this thing or and ward skins and all kinds of dumb shit, their newest big patch actually addressed performance issues, and that was the biggest problem I had with the game. Um, I would get random freezes, a lot of stuttering, uh, and like I, it was stuff that i wasn't getting in other games so i knew it was something to do with fault and not my computer and that and a lot, a lot of times i would try to cast abilities and abilities wouldn't go off there was just a lot of problems in fault and it didn't seem that they were addressing those performance issues as much as they were trying to pull people in by adding new heroes to their fucking season pass and bullshit. and i, I didn't like that at all so i just stepped away from fault and just didn't really play it but with um the the new patch the they cleared a lot of that stuff up the the input buffering really helped out with the abilities not casting i think that was a lot of my problem is i was ex expecting it to play exactly like paragon and you know hitting the keys exactly like i did in paragon and just shit wasn't happening the same way now it kind of does like that input buffering really helped out a lot just a whole bunch of different things they did but especially performance wise like i really like that they they took a step back took a step away from all that other crazy bullshit and focused on the game itself um that that's a problem that paragon had is they had a lot of i guess they call it spaghetti code where it's just just a lot of messed up code that didn't do anything in paragon because they never they they were so hung up on hashtag every three weeks that they never took a step back to fix the game so yeah to actually address it now yep. and, uh fault did that and i'm happy and i'm happy with the game now i'm, I'm having a lot of fun playing fault i'll be real with you i did not expect it to be as internal of an update right mm -hmm. like with stuff that they were talking about and then they also teased stuff coming down the road etc like the mastery system and whatnot i was actually very very surprised that whenever the game came you know whenever the update came out it was mostly internal and then the new ui essentially right. what happened right and then they added like a grux skin in there like that black and gold one kind of cool looking right i like the matte scarab i guess i don't even know the name yeah i mean that's just a paragon that's an epic asset that's not like yeah. they fucking bit time building that or anything yeah so i will say i give them kudos but you bring up a good point the the original feel when you first started it because one of the things that predecessor got claimed for was how smooth it felt right like one of the comparisons that i've done is predecessor low-key took that csgo approach in my eyes like from when i like when i looked at predecessor i was like okay so when i loaded up the map the world at least in the newer map the oh uh, you know the optimized one that everybody got to play i was like the world isn't the prettiest We've both been on a prettier map, that whole legacy inspired one that was just gorgeous by all means. Right. The world the world wasn't the prettiest. You looked at the ground, you know, textures were very simple, etc. But then you looked at the actual character, let's say for example, the Narbash, the Gideon, 
and it looked like a higher quality model right like it looked like the thing that was front and center on your screen what was what was focused on as far as quality you get what i'm saying kind of like kind of like on apex having the world around you be so so but your gun looks nice as shit because it's taking up a third <laughs> of your screen so i really i, I thought that was smart because when you actually looked into comparison also the fact that predecessor was only like 20 gigs and then fault was like 40 gigs 40 50 gigs you know of like around the same time july of 2020 right mm -hmm. you could definitely you could definitely tell that i really feel like fault tried to be too good for its own cause if that makes sense and, and part of that is something that we also talked about a little bit about off screen the fact that we saw what fault can do we just taken back three months of working on internal shit working on optimization and how much better the game got now not a lot of people realize that the first time that predecessor had a testing phase there was a few of us like mango spreading etc that were in there playing and quite frankly it did not feel good it looked great but it did not feel good so they actually took a year and three months without anybody being actually able to play fixing the game and then or about july 2020 they came out with a playable version for everybody that was a million times more optimized and that's what people got to right. test so i definitely feel that a lot of the hype that we're witnessing because i'm sure you see it on your channel all the time too right like y'all can't wait for predecessor this and that i definitely feel it's because if it, it, people's first perception of playing that versus playing fault was a more refined version you feel me natural right right and i'll be real with you like if i literally just tested both for the weekend i would have my own opinions on it right but being able to test them behind the scenes being able to test them over the course of time i almost wish that both of these games had started at the same exact time you feel me like it, like the, the way i see it it's easy for fault to feel better because they've been working on making it feel better for a longer period of time if that makes sense now how no, do you feel been working on it for a longer period of time right yeah yeah, they've been working since. Yeah, you said fault. I just wanted to make. Oh, sure. my bad, my bad. Yeah, predecessors yeah, have been working on it for a longer period of time. My bad. Yeah. So, being mindful. Let me actually ask you. How would you feel if predecessor does not come out this year? Uh, I wouldn't like it, but. Okay. Like um, I mean, I I, I want to play the game, but if. Omeda feels like their product isn't in a state that they can release it, then I prefer that they do not release it. True. Even if it means, you know, people talk shit and get pissed off about it. You know, I would love to play the game again. I really enjoyed Predecessor when I played it, but if it's going to, if it needs some time to bake, then leave it in the oven, man. Don't give me some raw chicken. True. Fucking food. But true. Now I'm hungry. Now. <laughs> let me ask you how would you feel if fault decided to shut down their early access nobody gets to play until full release uh that's a big problem though because people paid they paid with the expectation that they would continue to be able to they'd be able to continue to play until full release so that's uh i didn't think it was a good idea when it happened and i still don't think it's a good idea and it's very limiting for them with the season pass and the uh, the paid early access. Mm -hmm. uh, I do like that they are trying to be sustainable with the game. Um, they definitely need, you know, they need to make money. They're not evil because they're trying to make money. But um, I think they went a little too hard, a little too fast. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. I know a big criticism for Fault whenever they first, um, you know, first early, early access first got announced. There were bugs here and there, but the store worked perfectly fine. And you could buy everything perfectly <laughs> fine. So I know I yeah. trust me. I I heard quite a bit of feedback on that one. Yeah. Now, how would you feel if predecessor goes paid early access? 
I hope they don't. Um, I think they've gone the correct route by seeking investors and uh, and and getting you know applying for grants like they did with the Epic grant. I really hope that they don't go with the paid early access because um, they need a player base. That we we've seen that with Fault is there's such a small player base that the matchmaking sucks ass. So I, w- I want to see predecessor come in with a large player base, and you need to be free to play for that to happen anymore. If you, especially as an as an indie company, if um if they go up on Steam as free to play early access as opposed to pay to play early access, they're going to we're going to see people that have never even heard of Paragon starting to play predecessor because it's going to look gorgeous. It's going to look like something new that they've never played before. It's going to be like the whole Paragon experience for a whole generation of people that never even heard of Paragon. Um, I feel like that's what you we need. Get that with, you get that somewhat with fault, but not as much because nobody wants to drop $20 on something they don't know anything about. Whereas if it's free, yeah, they'll, they'll give it a try and then maybe they'll get hooked. True. But in order for any of these games to be free to play, the argument can be made that they need a shit ton of content, a shit ton of skins to be able to sell. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yeah. Now, it, I I can easily see Predecessor going along a similar route of, hey, he, here are all the Paragon skins. You can pay to support us monetarily or you can just earn them for free, right? I could easily see them going that same route because it, it'd be kind of dumb to not try and monetize, what is it? 12,000 assets, right? In some way. But I don't know, because we've already seen, what is it? Well, do you remember that Murdoch skin that they released for, Mur- for yeah, yeah. Predecessor? Yeah, badass. The Jailer Murdoch. Yeah. Looks super cool. Didn't necessarily function as well in game. It was a test trial, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that was actually mad funny, bro. Like my, my dude's hips and legs would be facing one way while his body was facing <laughs> the other way and walking. Like it was kind of like, Hey, um, my dude's special. That's all. I, that's all I gotta say. But look cool, right? Yeah. Now I think they were very smart about the the marketing about that. I think they were very smart to release their own, you know, skin within their their testing phases and stuff, just to kind of show that they can, right? And right. like back in the day, they also showed the Severog with the cleaver. That was also also really really cool, even though maybe not the best looking skin, but showing that they were working on creating their own content. So, I honestly would love to just see original skins and original content out of all these people. Tbh. I know yeah. that my webcam on your side just froze, but I'm still recording it perfectly did. fine, by the it way. Uh, scared me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was looking. Frightened. I looked up there confused. and I just I just saw myself. I was like, oh, rip. <laughs> but so let me ask you this. As far as content creation, have you as an individual content creator that's not affiliated officially with fault or predecessor right have you found it have have you gotten any help from these companies as far as content creation oh oh yeah yeah i have um we we good yeah it it just it's kind of freezing discord sucks (laughs) uh go ahead go ahead go ahead yeah yeah i have i mean uh, as far as predecessor goes, I, get, I I talk to Ruba a lot, who is on the on the uh, meta team. Um, I still talk to Smokey occasionally. I don't talk to him nearly as much as I used to, but like whenever or, and and Tiger Stripe that works for their marketing now. Whenever something happens with predecessor, they're short. They they make sure they let me know. And it's the same way. With, even though I I just I want to make this clear this something really clear right now too. I did cancel my fault partnership. Not because yeah. I was angry with Strange Matter or that I thought Fault sucked. It was just I wasn't playing the game and a Fault partnership comes with certain benefits like I don't know, skin key. If they if they had like finite benefits like skin keys or or, or or game keys or something like that that they want to do a giveaway for. I didn't feel like I was entitled to give that stuff away. I wasn't going to sit there and not do a video on them for two months 
and then they give me keys and then all of a sudden i'm doing a video for fault you know what i mean that's why i ended my partnership with fault not because of anything strange matter did but um i think i will probably um start restart my part partnership with strange matter because uh yeah i have been doing a lot of content for him and i actually feel comfortable with that partnership at this point but even even still even Which without me being you, a partner way. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> no, no, I'm the real. <laughs> well, before you say that, it's just kudos to you because I'll be real with you. There's plenty of individuals that grab that partnership status, mm -hmm. might not even make a video anymore, but they still try to keep onto it, right? Or they yeah. might, you know, stream like they, they were streaming the game all the time and now they don't even play it and try to keep the partnership. And Fault actually went through and like purged those individuals themselves yeah like they low-key went through there and you know started kicking people out it's like hey man i'm gonna be, i'll be real with you you're not really doing anything to earn this partnership status <laughs> etc so kudos to you for actually you being the one that's the you know, said hey, hey you know what low-key i'm gonna step down which probably put you in a better note to be able to come back in because you didn't get kicked out you were like hey i'm yeah. taking a leave of absence so to speak <laughs> All right, go ahead, go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, uh, well what, what I was going to say was even without being a partner, like when I did a couple of videos, like um, uh, Ryan Red just, he actually re reached out to me after um, a couple of the videos. Was like, hey, these are really freaking funny and I'm really enjoying these. Do you mind if I share these with the community? And um, do you, can, can I get your Twitter and all that stuff? And I keep telling him I don't fucking use Twitter, but... <laughs> But yeah, he actually reached out to me and he, he did promote. And then like Arba Dylan uh, leaves a lot of com like very helpful comments on my videos, which I know that's not directly like influencing me as a content creator, but it does help me play the game better, which is kind of which is kind of nice, you know? Yeah, <laughs> the fact that you started including that in the videos too is like, I took his advice. And then yeah. QS, <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, I QS. fucking can, bro. I, fucking, oh, I was that's like, yeah, so I can. Fun. I promise you in that video where you were like, I took his advice. I watched the video again. I was like, when did he give him advice? Like, <laughs> I was like, I'm so fucking, uh, yeah. I was like, I'm so fucking confused. I didn't even hear any advice, but I guess he gave him advice. Uh, so I'm pretty fast and loose with those quick clips. Like I'll do some fucking nonsensical titles and weird thumbnails for those that I won't do for my regular content. <laughs> I mean, they work, bro. They work and they're funny. Fucking like the, what is it? The Super Saiyan one? That shit was hilarious. TBH. <laughs> Yo, but... that was, okay. <laughs> that one bit me in the ass, by the way. But anyway, that was at the end of the night. It was at the end of a long night of supporting. My carry also had four kills. We had four kills apiece. And so I wasn't taking all of his, Bruh, all of his I, farm. I looked at your video. I saw that the carry could easily get the kill. And then I saw man goes, <laughs> my. <laughs> I was just, like, I looked at it and I was like, oh yeah, I definitely would have been yelling at him. Low key. But the, like, I fucking the saw next, you. <laughs> I swear to God, the next day I was in a game playing Richter. Oh, man. My ADC was I don't know what the hell was up with him, but he would run when he should have fight, when he should fight, and he would fight when he should run. So like, literally, I would ult on people with Richter with the with the impalement, stun them in place, and he would run away because he'd be low on health, which I'm fine with. That if you know, sacrifice my life for for the for the ADC if that's what it comes down to. But he would turn, see that I had had ulted them, and then come back in and get melted by twin blast, and then because they have been fighting it out i'm still alive i'll go ahead and kill that twin blast then some motherfucker in the comment in, in the in the I don't, I don't even what know what you call the, it in the the chat he commented like yeah in chat that's one that's like, the word i'm looking for some dude in chat oh there's mangoose when richter stealing kills from the adc i'm like oh son of a bitch it's because of that video now <laughs> hey man now you got a stigma on you loki i know right i'm the kill, so, kill securing richter so here's what i'm gonna do um let's actually end this specific video because we got okay. some good feedback trying to keep it on shorter format but i want to end it on one last little thing right how would you feel if within the next six months fault or predecessor just went straight into full release free full release i mean They've got a game. I don't understand alpha beta for such a long time. They've got a game, just release it. I, I wouldn't feel, I would. I think that's a great idea. I think they should just release it. 
stop dicking around with all this alpha beta shit. They've got all the assets. They've got everything working. Just go into the game and then start releasing regular content. Like I don't know what I don't know why. What are what are they what are they waiting on? Yeah. Um so I uh, trust me, bro. I've caught a lot of flack for saying I don't know why. Um, and it really is one of those things that, you know, they just consistently keep saying by both companies, they're like, oh, you know, there's stuff that we want to implement before that there's stuff that we want, you know, like we want to get to a certain stage before we go free release. And I'm like, you know, teach its own boo boo, but I'm still going to sit here and say, I don't, maybe I shouldn't say, I don't know why I don't understand why. I don't understand why they call it early access, early access when it's, it's the fucking game and there, there's. I mean, if when they go full release, it's going to be the same shit, just regular patches and updates and more heroes getting added in. It's not like things are going to be suddenly crazy different. They're still going to have stuff that they want to implement and add in. I will say, I know that Fault specifically told me one of the biggest things that they want to make sure that they get they they add in. Sorry, by the way, I'm eating these fruit snacks as usual. Um, <laughs> One of the things that they do want to add in before opening up the floodgates, so to speak, is a tutorial system. Just something to get people to learn the game a little bit easier. You yeah. feel me? Because right now the barrier to entry is kind of fucking high. And when people join in, it's it's just rough, right? So, so whenever they tell me that it's like, hey, we want to at least add a tutorial before we consider anything. I'm like, okay, I get that. But mm -hmm. then in my mind, I'm like, is this tutorial going to be in there in the next three months? Are you guys going to take six months to do it? Is it going to be there in a few weeks? Are you filming? At yeah, what point I don't know. does wanting to be prepared become more of a of a hindrance? If that makes sense. I don't know. So they've, they've been in pre they've been in early access for too long. I think early access should be to find out how your game plays and what needs to change they they know how shit plays and what needs to change and they're probably going to keep changing stuff in the future so yeah i yeah, think it I mean, should be full all, access by now all these games are going to be ever changing like you said it's constant updates constant adding stuff Look, i think legends of dota their game's been out for fucking years and years and years and they're still constantly changing and updating that's like, the nature of the game yeah. that's the nature of the game so I agree with like little things, and this goes for predecessor too. having certain things in place like a tutorial or a better learning system before the floodgates get open. OK, I get that. But I also do feel like, you know, just personal opinion that probably should have been something that should have been considered very early on, not this late into development. You feel me? Yeah. So, you know, arguments could be made on both sides, but let's end this specific video here. Okay. And just as always till the next video.